November 1st, 2021, in the beautiful city of the villages, people say near to heaven, <laughs> in Florida. My name is John Wuhan. I am the president of Korean War Legacy Foundation, which has more than 1,500 of Korean War veterans interviewed. That includes also some of the Korea Defense Veterans interview. The Korea Defense Veteran is defined as the heir of the Korean War veterans who was stationed in Korea since the end of the war, which is defined by the federal government of January of 1955. So, since then, there has been station of American forces throughout the whole year up to now from 30,000 to sometimes even over that more than 60,000 Korea defense veterans. They are real defender of the freedom in South Korea against the threat of North Korean communists. So it's my great pleasure and meet you and you've been helping me for several days already uh, for this interview series in the village. I want to thank you for that and I want to hear from you about your service in Korea as a Korea defense veteran. We are doing this to educate our children about the legacy of the Korean War. Why? Because the Korea, place of Korean War in our historical education is very small and that's not fair. So we want to fix that. Again, my pleasure and, and, and honor to have you as my friend. Please introduce yourself. What is your name? I am uh, Stephen Frangos, S-T-E-P-H-E-N. Frangos, F-R-A-N-G-O-S. What is the ethnic origin of your last name? I am a first-generation Greek. My parents were both from Greece. Huh? The Greeks fought in Korea, too. Absolutely. I yes. went to Athens yes. and yes. I went to, what is it? The, oh my goodness, the northern city there. Salonika. We'll talk about that later. Okay. <laughs> so if you visit my website, the foundation's website, you can see more than 50 interviews of Greek oh. expeditionary forces. Do you do them in Greek or English? No, I had an interpreter, yeah, my you friend, did. Okay. who was the younger brother of the Korean War veteran who was killed. Oh. So he, his name is Demetrius. And he was with me all the time. And really? we had a big conference in Athens in 2019 inviting teachers from 16 countries so that they can keep talking about the Korean War in their own country. Oh my. That's how we started. Wonderful. So great to be connected with the Greek. What is your birthday? I am uh, January 23rd, 1936. 36? I am 85 and a half years old. Wow. <laughs> Where were you born? I was born in uh, Ohio. I grew up in Pennsylvania, south of Pittsburgh, in a town called Uniontown. Uh -huh. But I lived all my life, or most of my life, before I came to the villages in Rochester, New York. Rochester, New York. Yes, so, near Syracuse. We are the neighbors. Yes, and I've I've traveled the world, and I've uh, I lived in Colorado for a while. I helped uh, start a factory, a plant in Colorado, and I uh, I am fortunate to say that I have visited all the continents of the Earth, including Antarctica, wow. and forty three countries. Tell me how you were able to. We traveled a lot. I traveled a lot on business. I traveled. What was your business? I was uh, an executive with Eastman Kodak Company for 35 years. Mm -hmm. And then I ran a consulting business for 10 years after I left Kodak. Still working for Kodak? No. I, mm. No, the consulting business was my own. So you've been to Korea? Uh, not only in the army. I was not, I did not get back there. I've been in the Far East, made many trips to Japan, but I have not been back. You gotta go back. Well, I think I told you that I almost made it when my uh, granddaughter skied in the uh, 
Olympics in Korea. What's her name? Tess Johnson. Tess Johnson, yes. I uh, watched you, the video too. Yes. <laughs> Scary, isn't it? <laughs> oh boy. Well, we didn't, I didn't go back. I had had some heart surgery and everyone thought it would be too difficult a journey. It was in the middle of winter. And uh, it turns out that they, they did tell me that it was a very difficult venue because it was very cold. <laughs> you can make a visit during the summer and I can put your name yeah. in the list for the revisit Korea. Yeah. Well, you never can tell. All right. So what high school did you graduate and where uh, and when? I went to high school in Uniontown, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. Uniontown Senior High School, mm -hmm. and I graduated in 1953. Uni Uniontown Senior High School? Yes, and I graduated just when the Korean War ended, or 19... the armistice was signed. 1953? Yes. Did you learn anything about Korea from school? Not from school, but uh, my father was a great student of uh, everything. He was very intelligent, didn't have much education, but he, he read a lot and uh, he encouraged me to read about the war. And he used to get the paper every day and read the reports about the war. So I participated in that and we talked about it a lot because ah. The war was going on while I was in high school. And uh, so that's, those were my impressions, early impressions of Korea. Mm. I knew where it was geographically. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I heard about uh, well, the problems with MacArthur and, uh, and, and the Chinese coming in. And I remember I would get the paper for my father daily and bring it to him and he couldn't wait to read how we were doing in the war. So you were faithfully following up with uh, what's going on in the Korean War? I was very up to date, yes. Huh. You are one of those few, very few, educated person. Well, yeah, I have my father to thank for that. Okay. So, in 1953, you graduated, and then what did you do? I went to college. What college was that? Carnegie Mellon University. Are you it, kidding me? It was then called Carnegie Tech. I got a small scholarship, and I, uh, I had a choice of several schools, but I didn't go, want to go too far from home. So I ended up uh, going to Pittsburgh, which was only 50 miles from my home. Carnegie Mellon University is one of the top technology universities in the nation. I was very fortunate to get a wonderful education. I graduated in uh, chemical engineering. Very good major. That is the top tier of the graduate who can make most of the money. Well. I, I learned a lot about uh, a lot of things, and I did get a good education there. But I tell people uh, when I discuss my education that most of my education came from working in my father's restaurant, the army, mm. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then school. I, I don't want to disregard what I learned in school. But those other two things were much more important. Mm -hmm. Also, I worked my way part way through school in the steel mills of Pittsburgh. Mm. I had part time jobs working for U.S. Steel, and I learned a lot there too. What a great point you are making. So, you graduate when? 1957? Seven, yes. And what did you do after that? Well, I had an ROTC degree. I had an ROTC training while I went to college. And I got my commission when I graduated as a second lieutenant. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did uh, go to work for Eastman Kodak for one summer and then immediately went into the Army in the fall of 1957. So you got the job from the Kodak? I got a job from Kodak immediately after graduation. And so 
in 1958, did you re-enlist it or what happened? No, I, I had a two-year uh, obligation right, as for ROTC. active duty, yeah. ROTC, and three years in act, active reserve and three years in active reserve. So uh, I went to uh, I had training. I got my training in Fort Monmouth, New Jersey as a Signal Corps officer. I was in the Signal Corps, and, uh, and then I went to Korea in uh, April of uh, 1958. So you had to do as an obligation because you got ROTC scholarship, right? Was it had to do or could you postpone it? Uh, you could get postponements. Um, I considered going to graduate school. I was accepted to graduate school, but uh, I went, uh, I wanted to go to the army. I had had enough of school and uh, I did not know where I'd go. I, I went to training and uh, that's when I heard I would be going to Korea. I did not know I was gonna go to Korea in fact, I was expecting to go to Greece hmm. because the signal commandant at Fort Monmouth thought it would be wonderful to have a Greek-speaking liaison signal corps officer, and he wanted me to go to Athens. <laughs> but, but I made the mistake of uh, doing too well in my uh, courses at uh, Fort Monmouth. And... Uh, they were creating a new unit, and I got selected to be one of the lucky ones to go to Korea. Good mistake. <laughs> <laughs> it was a wonderful experience. But you just got the job from Kodak, and you quit it, and you, you went to Army again. Yes. They knew, they knew when they hired me that I would be going to the Army. I told them I would probably not stay in the Army. I didn't know, but I said I would be coming back as soon as my obligation was done. Got it. Now it's cleared. So, you arrived in Korea where? I arrived in Korea in, uh, in Seoul. Seoul, so in, by air? Yeah, by yeah. air. I flew uh, from in, San Francisco to Hawaii to Wake Island. Wake to, Island, yeah. yeah. And uh, I arrived uh, around Easter of 1958 mm -hmm. and, uh, and then uh, took a train to the town of Chunchan where my assignment was. Mm. I was assigned to the 4th U.S. Missile Command, which was a brand new unit for Korea. And it was a, uh, it was a unit that had... Uh, missile cap capability with atomic weapons. And I was in the uh, signal company that supported that unit. It was a regiment-sized unit, and it was in Chunchan at a camp called Camp Page. Camp Page uh, was not well known, but it was uh, named after uh, a Medal of Honor winner who had been killed in the in the reservoir uh, fight mm. during so, the war. What was your official unit? What division? It was the 4th uh, U.S. Army Missile Command 221. Hold on. 4th U.S. Army Missile Command. Missile Command. And I was in the company called the 126 Signal Company. And you were... Second uh, lieutenant. Second lieutenant. I'm sorry. It was 226 Signal Company. 226. I said that wrong. Okay. You mentioned about nuclear weapon. And I believe that was the year that actually the nuclear, tactical nuclear weapon was introduced to Korea. In it was. In 1958, it was. right? Yes. Was it 57 or 58? It was, uh, it was probably not until 58. They announced it in 57, but uh, it, was, uh, it was the first nuclear weapons that had gone out of the country 
other than the two bombs we dropped on Japan. Ha. Huh. See, why, do you know why I'm doing interview with you? Because this is very, it's a history, because that was the, and then 1991, U.S. brought that back officially, but maybe, yes. I don't know. Yes, they're not there now. I, I, I think we don't have any nuclear weapons overseas now. Mm -hmm. So, what did you do there as a second oh, lieutenant? Uh, I was a platoon leader uh, of uh, the radio platoon. We had a radio platoon, a wire, com uh, a wire platoon, a communication center platoon, and uh, we had uh, radio relay sites at various points across the peninsula. We, uh, Chunchan was where rock, sir, uh, rock components were defending South Korea. There yep. weren't very many American troops, mm -hmm. but uh, we were able to uh, support them and I provided the radio communications for that unit to communicate with each other. Uh, we also had uh, high frequency radios. Uh, uh, they were called ANGRC 26s. And uh, w we had those in addition to radio relay sites. My troops were located all over the place. Uh, it was near the 38th parallel where Chunchan is. And uh, I would end up uh, flying to the sites very frequently because there were no roads to where the sites were located. They were located on the top of mountains. And, uh, and I ended up flying more than the pilots <laughs> uh, who were in the unit. We had a, a fairly large air contingency and I did a lot of flying. Mm. But you told me that you mentioned that there wasn't some kind of accident. I was uh, either fortunate or unfortunate to be in three airplane accidents. My goodness. One was with a Beaver uh, aircraft, an L-20, and two were in choppers. Huh. I survived them all. You never wounded? Injured? I got fairly injured in one of them. I had a concussion for a while and I cut my leg, but no, I was not severely injured. Were you married at the time? No, I was engaged to my wife, who's my wife of 62 years. Oh my you, will, you will beat her the, when we go to dinner. Oh, okay. Yeah. Excited. And um, did you see the nuclear weapon in your eye? Not really. I, uh, we would, uh, the artillery people who manage the nuclear weapons would do test firings and I had, I was in charge of the photographic section and we took pictures of them. I have some pictures that I'll share with you. Uh, but, uh, no, the nuclear weapons were pretty much under wraps and, uh, I was not involved with that, that activity and no, I never saw one. Good for you. <laughs> so you're safe. I was safe. No radio activities. Uh, no, no. All right. Other than that, is there any other episode you want to share as an active uh, leader? I mean, the, plat the company leader as a well, second lieutenant. Uh, relative to the Army, uh, we, we went to the field a lot, and we spent a lot of time in the field. Uh, the conditions uh, were improved from the war, but uh, the area was still very devastated. Uh, they were very poor and very uh, not prosperous at all. Uh, my... Uh, main activity when I wasn't working in the army was to help the orphans of the area. Mm. And uh, we helped build orphanages, one mainly, the main one in Chunchan. Uh, we befriended a group of, uh, of uh, 
priests from Ireland, the Christian brothers who were there doing missionary work. And they did not have very many resources, and we did. So we befriended them, and we helped them build an orphanage, and we used to visit the orphanage, and we used to have the orphanage uh, children come to our camp and have good meals. And, uh, and I enlisted uh, all my friends back home, my mother, my future mother-in-law, and my mother and my sister, and they uh, sent a lot of food and uh, clothing for these. Uh, uh, but I wasn't the only one. Other people that uh, worked with us sent a lot of uh, things to the orphans. They were in real need, and it was a very, it was a very rewarding experience to help them. When did you left Korea, leave Korea? I left Korea in 1959. One month. It was uh, May. So you were in Korea in late 1950s when Korea was not even beginning their in reindustrialization, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. We started our uh, five year economic development in 1962. So still very poor, very devastated, right? Oh, very, very. Juncheon uh, was a very large city, not one, of, not one of the largest, but it was fairly large. There was one building that uh, was more than one story in the whole city of Chunshan, the police station. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, and uh, the, the rebuilding had not started. Uh, there were schools, children went to school, but uh, conditions were not good. Mm. <clears throat> what about the situation there in the DMZ area? Because even after the war, altogether more than 1,000 Korea defense veterans died. It, ca it could be a accident, it could be something, but Anyway, more than 1,000 died. How was the situation there? Uh, there were accidents where I was. Uh, aircraft accidents, truck accidents, uh, accidental shootings. What but about North Korea? I mean, the, no, the confrontation, we, were there any? No, no, none. None, none at all. And we were defended by the uh, Republic of Korea Army. <laughs> so uh, actually, they were, they were the perimeter forces for our nuclear weapons that were very strategic, obviously. So were you able to visit around the country? Oh, yes, yes. Tell me, what, where did you oh, go and what did you see? Uh, well, I, I ended up in... Um, a lot of the large cities because of my duties. And I went to Seoul very often. Um, I, I did uh, transfer at the end of my, uh, I was there for 14 months. And after, uh, after about nine months, I was transferred to the 1st Cavalry Division. And I was a signal officer in, in the 1st Cavalry and that was because our uh, our unit uh, had uh, being a new unit had all been created at one time and all the officers went there at one time and were going to rotate at one time so they began transferring us to other units so that that wouldn't happen and i had a good experience at the first cavalry division uh, again uh, teaching them radio they did not have the radio equipment or the radio skills that we had in the missile command. You uh, mean the Korean forces? No, they no, were no, U.S. Okay, forces. US yeah. The, have you had you worked with the Korean forces to teach them? Uh, no, but I got to meet a lot of them, and I did. I did work with uh, the, with them, but not teaching. Mm. And I worked with Turkish forces, and I worked with uh, other allies. But uh, it was uh, 
not to teach, it was uh, to support. Mm. Tell me about the Seoul city you saw in 1958. Uh, How was it? I think Seoul was beginning to build. I think it probably was the first area that began to build. And uh, when I first got there, it was still very battered and uh, devastated is the word everybody uses. I, I saw signs of uh, revival mm -hmm. and uh, I had uh, tremendous optimism for your country, for South Korea. Why? Well, mainly the people. The people were uh, hardworking, had, had uh, very high values, valued family and education, were industrious, and um, I just knew they would succeed. Uh, they had all the tools, uh, they had all the mental skills and uh, uh, in their character, they had the abilities or they had the desire to uh, bring about the change that they just needed to be unleashed from Japan and from the war. And uh, I remember when I left, I knew they would be, they would be successful. You knew? I did not know how successful, <laughs> but I knew they'd be successful. So you know now the rank of Korean economy, oh, to just yes. simplify to, to tell you. Yes. It's the largest economy. I do know, yes. I do know and I've studied it and I've helped uh, Bill and others, uh, Mark, uh, put together the slide tape talk. So I, I've been a student of uh, what's happened in Korea and I'm uh, very proud to have been a part of it and to have seen that it was going to happen. <laughs> You've never been back to Korea, you told me, I, I, but you know the modern Korea, right? Oh, yes. I've seen pictures, I've, I've uh, read uh, uh, about the industry and uh, the education. I've even met some of the golfers who are very good in Korea. and. Uh, I'm just proud to have been proud of it. I had heart surgery two and a half years ago, and my heart surgeon was a Korean. Mm. Yes. The lady. A lady, yes. Mm. Dr. Kwan. Mm. So, you know, you watched uh, some of our interviews here, and you know all this transformation, but still, it's not big in the place of our history education, the Korea. And it's been known as forgotten war. Actually, it's a forgotten victory. And now Korea and the relationship with the United States, bilateral relationship become much more important than before even. Yes. Because of Chinese trying to challenge the American hegemony there. Yes. History changes, you know, Rome rose and fall, so it happens. But what do you think? How can we change this forgottenness in our education system? Well, what you're doing is very admirable. What uh, we try to do by keeping the war veterans uh, who are fading away just by the demographics of their age, it's important that uh, we keep that alive as long as we can because Korea is, uh, is really a success story for the United States and uh, it is for Korea because they were able to do what they did. But I think our help was very important to them. Absolutely. Yes. And um, uh, we all know that many other places have failed where Korea has been a success story. Mm -hmm. And it is because of their diligence and uh, hard work and perseverity that uh, brought them about uh, the tremendous rewards that they have. And, and they have a wonderful society now, a democracy, 
and uh, a very economic uh, winner. Yeah. Tell me about the Tell America program that your chapter is doing. Well, the Tell America program is primarily aimed at uh, our other chapters and the schools in the area. But we're hoping that uh, when it gets fully developed and it's very good, we're going to try to have it. You did see the slide tape talk, but we're trying to get it made into a video and maybe an easy to use video that schools can use and other chapters, and the hope is that many others will be interested in it because it not only traces the war, it tells about what led up to the war, and uh, I've been trying to push for what's happened after the war, too. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> uh, well, it's, we've got to be careful that it doesn't get too long because uh, long things get boring, mm -hmm. but I do, th I do feel that uh, there is just so much to tell about the modern Korea that we should have in that Tell America. Mm -hmm. uh, people certainly know more about it. They buy products from Korea. They know it's a good democracy. Yeah. But uh, they don't appreciate how, how good it's become. Only people who are there in the past and knows what's going on will be able to tell. That's why we are doing this. Yes. That's why we are yes. doing this. And so it is very important. And I saw your PowerPoint and I suggest some, some points where that we can make some improvements. And Good. we're going to have a, uh, we're going to have a workshop where that our core team members of the teachers will talk about what we are going to do for next year oh. in Florida, December 2nd, Tampa area, okay? The oh. same beach. So I, I invited your teams to come and present it to our teachers oh, so that wonderful. they can have a work together, collaborative works. And I want to make it because we have a many short videos to to show in the classroom to attract the attention from the young students, but we don't have a whole kind of uh, Korean War history. Yeah. Not in a long, so I want to make it shorter than now, and I want to introduce the first, the modern Korea in the beginning, and BTS, K-pop, all these things that can attract the young generation, and then go back slowly to the, to the Korean War. Well, that's wonderful, and uh, I know you've met them, and uh, I hope you appreciate them as much as I do, but we have some wonderful people who are very good at it, Mark Carey and Bill McLaughlin, and the general is a wonderful uh, leader. He's, a, he's an inspiration, and uh, he'd like to see this happen, and we appreciate your help a lot. Absolutely. It's my pleasure and honor to work with you. We know, we have some knowledge how to do work on this. So I'm sure you do. We'll do it together, okay? Wonderful. Yeah, I want to I build up this relationship. This is beautiful because another point that I want to add to your points is that this chapter 169, really working together between the vet, war veterans and defense veterans. And that's what's supposed to be happening. Yes. It's very important and crucial because... The war veterans will not be here forever. And uh, we do have defense veterans that uh, are still there. And we need to attract them. We need to engage them. And that's, that takes hard work. But a lot of us are dedicated to doing that. And again, any help you can give us. Uh, we also are very blessed to have... Uh, a big veterans population here in the villages area, and we have uh, uh, good media. I, I know you met Rachel, yep. but we have uh, a very willing media that is very supportive. And believe it or not, people here still read newspapers. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to broadcast the message, but we don't have forever. We've got to do it soon. 
everybody is numbered. Nobody yes. is out of number, yeah. being numbered. And yes, that's why we are doing this. And um, we are not wall mongering. Okay, we want to teach the lessons of the history. Yes, that's why. And we have a beautiful story to tell. Yeah. It is uh, not only in terms of uh, the outcomes of the war, but the outcomes for Korea and the world. And the relationship and, between two countries. And with high hopes, they'll patch things up with the North and maybe get the North to be more yeah. like the South. Yeah, really. That, that's a dream, but uh, I, I'm sure you hope that, and I know a lot of people in this country do. It's, uh, it looks, sometimes it looks uh, very uh, unlikely, but uh, you never know. You never, you never know. know what can happen. I thank the leadership of General McWaters and Mark Carey. Captain Mark Carey has been impeccable or organizing everything. Bill McLaughlin and Steven Frango has been my my friends and so I Thank really you. like this chapter. I appreciate that and I want to work with you and you let me know what I can how can I be helpful, okay? I can come back again and do more interviews oh. and so on and so on, okay? We'll have you back. And I'm sure that the publicity we get from your interviews will draw more people in. There must be more people who uh, want to participate and will. Absolutely. And I think we'll, uh, I'm sure the newspaper article will have people calling in and saying, oh, I was there, why didn't anyone ask me? And we'll sign them up. Excellent, this is good, very good. It has to be continuously something good coming out of our encounters and relationship and meetings and friendships. So, this is amazing. I love it. And so tell me about what is the legacy of Korea defense veteran? Well, the first thing is to honor the Korean war veterans. Uh, they did some marvelous things. When you hear an interview like we heard this afternoon, it brings a tear to my eye. And uh, we were fortunate not to live in that time period. We could have been in that. We could be dead, <laughs> but um, that's the first thing. The second thing is to make sure the memory of it doesn't die. And that's the harder part because uh, as time goes on, we are getting older too, and it, it will be harder and harder to perpetuate the, uh, the memories and the uh, all yeah. the good feelings about uh, what people should learn in future generations. Oh. I, wrote, uh, I wrote my memoirs uh, a few years ago, oh. and I had a whole chapter about Korea for my grandchildren. Hey. I have six grandchildren, and they didn't know much about it. They're young. And uh, a lot of them said they didn't know. They didn't know I was involved with that. So I am very pleased with that. If you're real nice, I'll give you a copy of my memoirs. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> you know, and it's not just about South Korean economy. It's a really important historical lesson because Cold War started with the Korean War and that Cold War hasn't finished yet in East oh, Asia. No. Oh. And it's about democracy versus dictatorship and authoritarian totalitarianism and also capitalism versus state commanded socialist economy. Yes. So there are big topics right there in Korean Peninsula and we need to talk more about it, okay? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm in a complete agreement with you and we have to make sure the whole world hears what's happened there because it is something to copy, it is something to model, and it's uh, hard work Yeah. because too many people want the opposite, and uh, that's sad. But don't worry, I have more than 1,500 of 
oral history, <laughs> and they will keep talking about it. Oh, great. No matter how, great. No matter how long, and no matter all the Korean War veterans disappeared, they will keep talking. Why? Because I have an interview. Wonderful. Yeah. This has been a great experience um, wow. visiting to the villages, and you have a great community here. So, what would you say to Korean people to wrap up this interview? <laughs> oh, I would say I've met uh, a lot of them. We have a lot of them in this area. Uh, we have uh, wives, uh, women who have married uh, ex-soldiers. Uh, we have a Korean club. I understand you're going to be getting together with some of them. And... Uh, I think uh, that they, they need to participate in telling the story too, because I do think that they're more thankful than a lot of the other people we've helped. Our country doesn't really go to other countries to conquer them, it goes to help them. But we're not painted with that brush. And uh, in Korea, the people have maybe a, an obligation to let the world know that here's an example of where they came to help and they helped. And here's the result. Excellent. Excellent conclusion. And I, again, appreciate your help and support for this. And I'm really appreciative of this relationship and friendship. And thank you for your service, honorable service, well, to continue to defend uh, South Korea. Well, thank you. And thank you for doing this. We'll see more of you. Thank you, sir. Don't let us down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay.